there. This is Melissa Wokolo, and we're talking about creating a carrier packet. Um, because of the legalities that are super important when it comes to your relationship and the protection of your brokerage company um, in regards to a carrier, I am highly recommending that you go back to your surety bond company, discuss the commodities that you are hauling, and then move toward receiving their broker, their standardized broker carrier agreement, the template that they want you to use. Um, that is the best way. Um, I know that um, PFA, Pacific Financial, um, does give that standard out. Um, so I would highly recommend to go that route. That way you are all complete and set up and they have an industry standard. However, I will um, attach with this video as well as um, an industry standard that you can get vetted and verified. But again, I would go back to your um, surety bond company, especially if you're going to haul perishables like reefer, overdimensional, um, high dollar freight. You just want to make sure you're covered as a company. Um, but let's go over besides that. Um, from the surety bond standpoint, I think that's the best way. Once you have that, I recommend a digital packet, um, something like carrierpackets.com, its.com, or RMIS. Um, they all are really good, um, really good companies that I would use um, or discuss or, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and type that right here so those are some really good companies that i would um recommend okay so now let's begin um by saying okay what do you do you book your shipment your shipment has been secured with a carrier um verbally on the phone or by email and they are not set up in your company so what do you do you first begin by sending the carrier packet to the carrier so how do you compile that carrier packet? Normally a carrier packet has your billing information as the first page, meaning it has on the very first page, the name of your company, your logo, um, your company address, and um, also any points of contact, like for example, who's in dispatch, who's in accounting, where would your carrier send their invoices? Um, a lot of invoices are sent electronically. You might want to set up an email specifically, something like payables at blank company or admin at blank company. That, that way, when, when the emails are routed in, don't make the mistake of setting it up with your normal email address because when you get larger, um, you'll have to change all that and then there's a transition out of it. So... Um, and you don't want to get things lost, especially carrier bills, right? So um, you'll send the carrier packet to them on that very first page is information about you. Underneath that, it's a broker carrier agreement. If you're set up with carrierpackets.com, ITS, or RMIS, they will help you walk you through the onboarding. And then you'll receive a link. And that's the link that you will now send to your carrier, okay? So then once you receive it, you're going to go through a verification process. What is that verification process that you need to look at? So I'm going to spend, um, if you just give me just a few minutes, I'm going to put us on pause and I'm going to come back and show you what that looks like. Great. I'm back. Aren't you glad I'm back? All right. So the things that you are going to want the carrier to send you is a copy of their Motor Carrier Authority. Now, this is an old, a newer one. If you work with older companies, they will not look like this. Also, make sure if it doesn't look like this or if it looks like it was made on Google or some kind of, um, be careful that you just, it's very important you have it and it's very important that you just don't get just the MC number, all right? then you will need to get a copy of insurance. For example, um, commercial liability, general liability. This is a freight broker one. 
Um, so it would not say freight broker cargo liability. It would actually say cargo um, liability. And usually it's for 100,000. So you have general liability for a million, auto liability for a million. You set the standards of what your company wants to haul. Some companies do not carry, especially if you're big into um, big into hotshot, they may not cover um, that general. So it just depends on what your coverages are. You need to be listed as a certificate holder, okay? You need to be listed as a certificate holder. So if you do sign up with a big box company like ITS Onboarding or RMIS, they will get those certificate holders for you. Um, but if you're not, you need to make sure that your name, your company name address is as a certificate holder. Also, one of the things I look at too is up in the right hand corner about right here, you're going to see a date of when it was issued. Make sure it's been issued within the last 30 days, especially that's something that we discuss. And if your insurance policy is expiring, the carrier's insurance policy is expiring within let's say 30 days, you want to call that insurance company and make sure that they still have coverage, especially if the insurance is really close to expiring. These are ways that you can protect your company as a freight broker. Okay, another thing that you're gonna want to have is a W-9. So I'm gonna come and show you what that looks like. Give me just a moment. All right, so you're gonna need a W-9 from your carrier. So it should have their name, if they are a corporation, you do not need to send a 1099 at the end of the year. If they're a corporation, S-Corp partnership, um, trustee, or LLC, you, again, do not need to send a 1099 at the end of the year. However, if they are a sole proprietor, even if they have an EIN, but this is checkmarked, you need to have an accounting software or some kind of way of tracking your 1099s, okay? So be sure that you're doing that social security number or employee identification number. Most companies would have an EIN, but even sole proprietors have that. Make sure it is signed within the last year and you'll want to update this as well as your BCA, your broker carrier agreement every year and following up on that. I do wanna go ahead and show you a cover page. Um, you can do something like this for your cover page. Um, you can get this on Canva, um, as well as you can get it on any kind of um, Word document, like Word. They will allow you to do that. Um, making sure that on your cover page, you're also giving information about accounts payable, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna take this off the page and we will get back to now that you've verified all of their documents, their W-9, their insurance, and their authority, you, what do you do next? If they're missing documents, do not send the rate confirmation. Even if you're under pressure, make sure you do not send the rate confirmation because not having these documents on file is a breach to the legalities of you running a business. So please do not cut corners, all right? Ask the carrier for the missing documents. Once you receive it, you're gonna send a carrier confirmation to the carrier. What is a carrier confirmation? We won't go in that today, but it is an agreement that you put up between um, the carrier and yourself, giving out step-by-step -step the instructions of the, um, of the load, where it's picking up, where it's delivering, pickup numbers, et cetera. So once you've verified it, you will send the carrier confirmation. Then you're gonna to wanna to set up due diligence. You're gonna to wanna to set up due diligence. Very big company that I highly recommend that you have information in is called Carrier 411. Carrier 411. So once you're in under Carrier 411, let's say for example, we go to this company, there is something called a due diligence. This due diligence is super important. I'm not gonna show you because I don't wanna get involved in anything and showing a company of what they're doing. But if you come in here and um, you look at their due diligence, you're gonna see that there is a IP address up in the right hand corner. Um, let me try to show it to you. Give me just a moment. 
Let me make it a little bit bigger. Do you see that right here? Um, there is a creation date and a date as well as an IP address. As long as that date is the date of pickup. For example, if I was picking this up tomorrow, the date cannot be for today. It has to be the date of the shipment date. And 631 as being the time, it has to be before they pick up. Why do you do this? Because this is saying, I've done my due diligence. I vetted this carrier. It stands up in the court of law. Okay, it has been known to stand up in the court of law. It shows that you are running a legal carrier compliance department. Highly recommend carrier411.com. Very inexpensive, about a hundred bucks a month. Um, but it is a sure bet when it comes to running your company. Is it necessary? No. Is it important? Yes. So you decide what you want to do, but I would highly recommend that you do that. So that is why I set up, said set up due diligence. If you do not want to pay for the carrier 411 due diligence, you will need to set up safety standards within your company. What are the basic performances? How long does a carrier need to be in business? What is your company policy in regards to um, measures of percentile? Anytime a carrier has, this carrier has been in business for 15 years, they only have two power units, only had two inspections, really good carrier. Anything over 50% here could be a problem, especially if, if they're in red, as well as freight guard reports. Um, you'll just want to double confirm in and out how you are running your carrier compliance department. However, this is beyond the legalities. Want to book a time with me? More than welcome to. And we can go over this in more detail. Super important to get the legalities of this department in order because it will determine whether you're great or whether you're going to have issues down the line. You don't want to cut corners in this department. All right. I will talk to you soon on our next talk.